Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. Welcome to another video. And like the title says, this one is on 10 fragrances for 10 different types of dates. Now it's been from time since I've last recorded a date related fragrance video. So it goes without saying that I'm really excited to do this and I hope you guys are excited too. But I must say that this is not an original format for this date style video. I was actually directly inspired by Gabriella Francesca. I'll leave her links in the description below if you don't already know who she is. She's way bigger than this channel. She does perfume videos, horoscopes, mental health, a lot of everything, but she's great, so please check her out. And her initial video consisted of 13 types of dates with 13 types of perfumes, of course. And yeah, she was pretty specific. She was able to break things down awesomely, and I'm like, I need to do this too. But for the sake of time and for the sake of kind of making it my own, I lowered it to 10 fragrances for 10 different types of dates. And some of these dates I pulled verbatim from her descriptions, but it is what it is. So essentially I lowered it to the types of dates I feel like are most likely to be on my horizon and or would want to be on my horizons. So again, I hope you enjoy this and we might as well get to it. But just before we do, again, if you do so happen to enjoy this, please give this video a like. It really helps the channel out. I'd really appreciate it. And if you really, really like this video, then please subscribe if you've yet to. And if you like it even more, please hit the notification bell as well. So you'll be the most up to date when stuff like this is uploaded in the near future. Maybe I do similar styles of this video, who knows. But yeah, let's just get on with it now. First fragrance for the first type of date, and of course that is a first date. Now for a first date, you almost want this to be borderline signature scent quality, mainly because you kind of want her to get to know you, like we're talking the real you. But if you're already conscious of already making good first impressions amongst anyone you stumble upon, then you probably aren't always reaching for some of the most popular fragrances out there already. I know that's partially why I got into the fragrance community, so if you're watching this video, maybe you aren't always rocking these ones I'm about to mention. So things I would try to avoid for this kind of situation and or again a potential signature scent are. And it's nothing against these fragrances, I own most of these. But yeah, we're talking the one by YSL, Dior Sauvage, Bleu de Chanel, Aqua de Jo by George R. Armani, even Avantus by Creed is kind of getting some love around here lately. But yeah, I live in a fairly populated suburban area with a lot of European people around here. So a lot of people, it goes without saying, wears fragrances here. So I've always been furthermore conscious to want to regulate what I'm actually wearing. So again, that's part of why I got into the fragrance community. And I found some really cool signature scent quality stuff that would again, really fit in well with this kind of first impression for a first date. But now here we go with the one I would actually pick and it's potentially my favorite fragrance ever. It's this lad right here. It's called Gypsy Water by Byrito, AKA G Water. But yeah, if you're a long time watcher of this channel, you would know that I absolutely adore this. So here we're talking a really bright blast of lemon into opening, not so sharp, kind of lean sweet. You have some pepper in there as well for a little bit of kick in your nose and some juniper and some other things like pine, giving it a nice green coniferous feel. The scent seems all over the place, but trust me, it is blended really well together. Very adventurous yet cozy and it gets really cozier. Once you get into the dry down stages, you have some sandalwood, some vanilla in there too. Just a really comforting offering. And I just feel like it puts the wearer at ease, especially when they're meeting someone for the first time. If they do so happen to catch a whiff of you, it's not going to feel like you're trying too hard as well. It's not a boring scent in the air either. I think it's fairly straightforward, yes, but it is interesting again, because not a whole lot of people are smelling like this, at least not in my experience. So yeah, if I've ever had to make that kind of impression and I so happen to be wearing this stuff subconsciously or consciously, I'm not lying. I more often than not get a compliment with this, which is quite awesome, especially when people complain about the performance of the scent. You guys know who you are. That being said, this is what I would reach for. I'm just saying maybe you wanna channel a similar mood for your first dates, especially if you're conscious of not trying to come off like an ex-boyfriend like I am, especially around where I live. So yeah, you heard it first for my first date. I would definitely rock this one right here by Rito's G Water gypsy water. All right, moving on to the second date on this list and presuming things went well with your first date, you know, you probably did something chill like you're grabbing coffee at Starbucks or something. Now it's time to get a little bit more intimate, at least with the conversations. And I think the perfect place to do that is the pub. So this is a pub date. You know, local pubs, dive bars, places like this are quite awesome as far as just, you know, loosening up and just talking to whoever matters to you at that moment the most. And I'm going to reference Gabriella in her video when 
I say what I'm about to say here, but say if you are sitting across from each other and you always have to lean in to talk to one another and that conversation is actually really good and there's chemistry there and it's worth leaning in for, then make sure that you're wearing something that you'll catch a whiff of that is even further more interesting. You want to have her keep coming in. So I think I have just a thing and again, I don't feel like you need to try too hard in this situation either, but here it is. It's Udin Overdose by Zerjoff. Now, if you're familiar with the initial version of Udin, that's great. It has a really nice blast of citrus in the opening and dries down into something like a cozier, sweeter vanilla. And while you have a similar opening here and you're going to feel that in the air, it's going to feel like the initial Udin, it kind of rushes into something else, which I feel like is a little bit more interesting. Now, the note that is in the dry down is advertised as tobacco blossom, but it's not like a floral note, so do not be scared off with the word blossom if you are. What rather feels like instead is a really warm but really safe tobacco. So the tobacco blossom here is very enveloping. It just feels super warm, super cozy. And I just think it's really interesting in a really good straightforward way. And if you're looking for something different that you just want to have, again, people keep leaning in for, I think this is one of those scents. It was actually my most complimented fragrance from last year. So perfect for a pub night out, perfect for a listening conversations. I think you could not go wrong with this stuff. Again, and it's Udin Overdose by Zerjoff. All right, folks, moving on. Don't worry, this list is going to get a little bit cheaper with this one right here. I'm not saying you have to pay up or cheap out. Doesn't matter. Do what you're comfortable with, with your finances. Again, don't go into debt for fragrance. It's not worth it. But yeah, what is this third type of date here? And if you guys had a nice time at the pub, I think you'll have a nice time at the club if you're into that too. I think the club is a really interesting environment because you'll be able to really see if someone's really at ease with you there and or with themselves. You know, if they're down for dancing and or just being uh, maybe a social butterfly to a certain extent. When you're conversing with the doorman and or the bartender, I just feel like other facets of your aura are going to to be on display here. So you just want to come correct and come correct for the type of environment you're in. So here you don't have to smell that interesting, if not, not at all, but just be jovial and confident and just feel like you're having a good time. And again, it helps if you have a fragrance that would elicit these things. So the fragrance I'm thinking of is this guy right here. It's a proven club favorite from the Spice Bomb line, but this one is the extreme version. Now I think Victor and Rolf did a splendid job here, mainly because it still smells like Spice Bomb because it opens up like that, but you have something rather than feeling extreme like the name says, it feels cozier. It feels like kind of grown up from the initial Spice Bomb DNA. It's not as pushy or anything like that. And mind you, if you're trying to get someone's attention, hopefully the other people in the club aren't already wearing Spice Bomb, say if that is the fragrance you wanna get attention with. But what if you already have her attention? Again, this is your second or third date in with her. You got the girl, try to keep her, and I think this is more flattering if you are trying to, because again, it's not as familiar as Spice Bomb, say, if you wanna smell potentially more different and or pleasant. Again, this stuff is way more reliant on vanilla and other sweet facets of the scent towards the base. So when you're working up a sweat there, just being in the club, being around all those bodies and whatnot, I just feel like this is going to radiate off of you beautifully, and hopefully she feels that way about you too. So yeah, definitely hope this helps. Definitely what I would reach for at a club lately. Again, it's Spice Bomb Extreme by Victor and Rolf. All right, moving on to the next date, and this is your bedtime date, mainly because if you were able to do A, B, and C right, first date, maybe a coffee date, again, you did well. A lot of small talk, you made some good conversation, cool. Pub date, it got a little deeper, and she was still hooked, cool. Club date, it went well, it was a home run, cool. But now it's that time, bedtime date if you didn't already have that beforehand. So connect the dots, you know what I mean. And yeah, for this date, if you will, I just want to smell like the male version of a snack, but I still feel like smelling like a gourmand fragrance, if you know what that is, smells like a dessert, might still be a little polarizing because that's almost too much like a snack. But yeah, just something yummy that doesn't go club crazy, but that smells equally delectable in a more subdued way. I think you can find this. And again, I definitely found this and it's a really appropriate name for this occasion. It's called Rolling in Love by Killian. So here you have notes of almond milk, iris, and musk, and it just absolutely radiates beautifully off your skin if you're 
cool to engage in this kind of activity. Like I just feel like it accentuates your natural smell in a sweeter way that doesn't go sickly and or sour. It's just beautiful. Almond, for example, has this tendency of smelling too sickly off of a lot of skin chemistries, including mine, but whatever this almond milk is, for example, is just right. So whether I'm wearing it and or if my partner were to wear this, I just feel like someone's going to be going crazy for this scent and I just feel like it's an all round winner for this bedtime category. So to add to that, say if you don't want to do this, for example, if you already know what this is like and you don't think this is for you, should have mentioned this earlier, but I will say that maybe facets of this scent barring the sweetness are something that could work for you. So if there's a musk out there that you feel like is really seductive, maybe it's that, but nothing too musky per se. But I just don't think you can go wrong with musky and sweet. I just feel like I have the best of both worlds right here in equal amounts. So it goes without saying, overall, I'm a really big fan of the scent for this bedtime date category. And again, check this out if you've yet to. So here it is, it's by Killian rolling in love. Now moving on to the next type of date, you're wondering what this is going to be like. Now you've passed most of these still casual tests as a budding couple. First date together, pub together, club together, sleep together. But you're so ingratiated in with her now that she wants to introduce you to her friends. So ladies and gentlemen, this category is the group date. And group dates are supposed to be fun and overly casual. So this might be the most casual you've dressed for something too so far. But yeah, there are a lot of scents that are super casual that you can just have fun with at a really leisurely level. So as far as this leisure, group date activities can include bowling, escape rooms, arcades, things like that. Stuff I wanna feel the most youthful for. And there's a scent that I would most definitely pick for this one. And I've remarked about this scent, about it making me feel younger in the past and I still feel that way whenever I do spray it because it's one of those scents I would have wanted to have when I was younger. It's this, it's called Barfly by Scotch and Soda. Fairly bright, not so long lasting opening of citrus among other things, but for the most part, it comes off as rather ozonic off of your skin. And I think that's a really cool effect. Kind of like a mossy, dewish kind of wetness that I feel like is really appealing and not too Kaloni per se, and not too Kaloni like other mall scents. You have some sandalwood in the dry down here as well and I just think it's a really safe offering overall and it's hard to hate. And overall, it just comes off as youthful yet sophisticated and definitely, again, casual enough for something like this. Now, a heck of a whole lot of compliments here, which you might want to be mindful for if you're going to be around other people. But to be honest, I'm just trying to have fun and trying to get to know them. If they catch a whiff of this, maybe they will compliment you. Mind you, it's happened to me, again, just not in bushels. But again, just warm, youthful, sophisticated enough and casual enough for this. That's why I picked this scent. It's Barfly by Scotch and Soda for your group date needs. All right, now moving on to this next type of date, and this could be with a group, if not without a group. I definitely think this next date is definitely on the horizon or should be, and that's an outdoors date, whether it involves a long car drive to somewhere you're going to go hiking, camping or going to the beach. You've got to know each other a little bit more. Why not get to know each other within the confines of nature? And one of the scents I think of when it comes to nature, yet I think of when it comes to anything corporate is Terre d'Hermes, believe it or not. But again, with you being outside, you're probably sweating out and whatnot. Terre is probably going to be a little bit too heavy for you. So that's why I have this guy right here. It's Terre d'Hermes Eau de Fresh, a lot lighter than the initial Eau de Toilette. Don't get me wrong, it still has some bite with a woody backbone, but it has an even brighter opening here. It's still that trademark Jean-Claude Elena Hermes orange, but it just feels lighter and again, just perfect for the outdoors. Now you could argue that you can go for something even further more lighter, like a Mugler Cologne too, for example, but that just smells like you only showered and maybe that's a good idea. You know, presuming that you're gonna be sweating out for the long haul, that's cool, very practical. I just think that something like this is that much more flattering and that's why I'm picking it. Just perfectly gentlemanly and casual for, again, your outdoor needs overall. So check it out for your outdoors date if you've yet to, it's Terre de Mez Eau Tray Fresh. But moving on to the next date, you did some getting to know each other again as individuals initially and then within the confines of a group. But now things are serious and you want certain things to mean stuff, if not be symbolic of stuff. So why not go shopping with each other? So yes, this next date is a shopping date, so head on down to your downtown core and get threaded up. If not your local mall, just whatever you got. I'm not saying you have to buy each other things, maybe you're not going to operate like that. Maybe you're just not at that stage yet, say if you wanted to be. But what if I did pick up maybe a hoodie that might mean something to me? And I'll just reflect back on this day and this person about it. Things you pick up that day might be really sentimental for you. So why not take in a day like this with some gravity? And if you've been watching my channel lately, you would 
know that I would definitely pick this as my shopping scent. I've mentioned this in my most recent summer designer video. Here it is, it's 1957 by Chanel. Like when I just think of a retail mentality, I just think of the whole brand and facade of Chanel. And I think 1957 does a good job of furthermore conveying that. And if you want furthermore evidence of what I said this year in 1957 and why it's called this, it's to commemorate Coco Chanel herself accepting award at a New York City Neiman Marcus back in the day in that year for what I think is billed as distinguished service in the field of fashion. So yeah, not wrong. Again, to evoke that sheer sense of love here you have a white must that's just utterly beautiful from Chanel but here you have some more powdery facets to just give it some more luxurious of a feel just emanates off your skin beautifully especially for the spring and early summer potentially great for a warmer autumn day too I would say but what might make this differ from something like this in Rolling in Love by Killian is that again you're just not smelling with a snack with this it just feels like luxury. You could perhaps argue that it is a little bit too effeminate. And again, you have to keep in mind you are on a date with someone. So if you don't want to go this route, I understand. But I just think it's worth having something a little bit more sophisticated for an occasion like this. But again, all of y'all check this out if you've yet to for your shopping date needs. It's 1957 by Chanel. Or Mille Neuf Saint set. But congratulations, you're feeling sophisticated. Not saying all of y'all have to be. It just maybe you are, who knows. But it's time to dress it up a little. And don't worry, you can be balling on a budget in this category too. I'm just saying I really like fragrance. And the fragrance I so happen to want for this next category just gonna cost a little. And this is your formal date. Like we're talking museum, we're talking theater or musical theater, not the movies. We're talking live acting, singing, storytelling. We're also talking getting yourselves a nice meal after or before or whatnot. If you're from Toronto, I'm talking Joey's and or Cactus Club Cafe or better. I mean, all of this is a flex, so you you might as well feel like you're flexing in something regardless of price point. Here we go, it's Angelique Noir by Guerlain. And this is just without a doubt the most sophisticated scent on this list and potentially my entire fragrance wardrobe. We're talking a pear opening which kind of leans greener as a fruity kind of sweetness. So with the rest of the opening having stuff like pink pepper and or angelica seeds especially, it's just going to complement everything together and it's just Oh, so luxurious from there. We're talking green aromas and like powderiness emitting off of you and it's just radiant. Dry down, you still have that same effect. It's going to hit your nose like that, but it's gonna be a lot cozier with the vanilla coming out. But through all that dry powderiness, this vanilla is not gonna come off as gourmand as well. And that I do have a little bit more success with in my experience, really syrupy, coumarin or tonka bean driven stuff and or vanillas that just come off as gourmand just don't really do as well for me in the feedback category just because it's a little too much off my skin. And don't get me wrong, this scent is bigger than a lot of those things either. It just doesn't come off as sickly and it's a little bit more flattering again in my experience. That being said, it just captures the essence of the gravity of the situation here. Again, this formal situation could have come as a result of a promotion for one of you at work and and or a monthly dating anniversary or whatnot. You're just taking this seriously and you should take the scent seriously, just saying. And I think this scent takes itself seriously. Again, that's why I picked it. It's Angelique Noir by Guerlain for all your formal dating needs. But now you've gotten through all of that, we have a couple more scents here, but with that last scent, that last date, it could have involved something furthermore too. Maybe you stepped it up a notch. What have you proposed? Congratulations, kid, you are now getting married. Here is your wedding date scent. And for weddings, I traditionally want to envision myself going for something still opulent, but not as showy like these previous potential other categories. So rather an understated elegance. And when I think of that, I think of flatter colors, monochromatic, if not just shades and or tints. So I have blacks and white stuck in my head, specifically whites, and when I think of white, I think of this. We're talking Silver Mount Water by Creed. I would want this as my wedding date scent. So here you have a slight inkiness that comes from the black currant. It's a bittersweet fruitiness, but ultimately it is rather pleasant. But once you get by that, you have this really alpine take on tea. I love tea scents. You guys know that if you've been a long time watcher of this channel. And the way Creed blended this with the musk as well, it's just glacial, takes your breath away kind of fragrance. Say if you were in the Swiss Alps or something like that. But that level of positive astonishment is kind of of what I want for the aura of my wedding and or that kind of feeling for the person I'm about to marry. And it's so hard to hate, honestly, 
This is one of my most complimented scents of all time and no one's ever said anything negative about it off of my skin. And I just think it's a classic despite its unknown status outside of the fragrance industry directly and or the fragrance community. It's one of those scents in the grand scheme of things that I just feel like is super underrated. Again, in comparison to the Tweeds or Avantus of the world of Crete. But yeah, don't sleep on this. If you still are, at least check it out again. Maybe it grows on you, who knows? But for me, it was love at first sniff, which makes it a natural choice for this wedding date. So again, once more, wedding date scent, Silver Mount Water by Creed. But here we go with the 10th and final scent and what's next after the wedding. You're wondering how do you close this off? Of course, you still have the honeymoon. So presuming you're going somewhere nice, you're going somewhere picturesque, maybe you wanna to go to Bali, maybe you wanna to go to Seychelles, Maldives, something like that. And to be fair, maybe you wanna reach for another Creed because there's a few of them that would be super appropriate for this occasion. But I'm finna mix it up and I know this works because I have first-hand experience of being somewhere tropical with this and it was just absolutely gorgeous. Here it is. It's called Note de Yuzu by Maison Kitsune x James Healy. Now, if you're familiar with the scent Cell Marin by James Healy, this is pretty much that, but they laced it with yuzu on top instead. Got sea salt for more of that maritime vibe as well. A little bit of vetiver and musk in the base, but nothing too crazy. So yeah, for the most part, this is just a super clean scent. You probably want something super clean if you're going to be touring somewhere. You know, somewhere really hot and nice, like I already mentioned. But again, the reason why you want this kind of super clean over other super cleans that there are so many of is that opening, that yuzu. Yuzu is just a very juicy yet somewhat sharp Japanese lemon. Just works well with anything super clean and it's just, oh, so flattering. But yeah, juicy, marine, clean, straightforward, can't go wrong with this. So after a couple of years, still somewhat overlooked as well, but definitely one that anyone gets their nose on, they'll at least respect. But if you especially like marine scents, if you've yet to try this, definitely do it already. And again, for the reasons I outlined, it's just perfect for a honeymoon in my opinion. So once more, here it is. It's No Diuzu by Maison Kitsune x James Healy. And yeah, for him, there it is. That about does it for my different types of dates, different types of fragrances for him. I hope you had fun with me trying to envision and rationalize all of these different scenarios and whatnot. Of course, you might have a different line of thinking and hey, that's great. Maybe you found this list a little bit one-dimensional. Maybe you found it too multi-dimensional. Whatever it is, if you have any critiques for it, let me know in the comment section below, but also be sure to tell me which fragrances you would reach for for each category as well. So with that being said, once again, also leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more things like this in the near future. Again, big thanks again to Gabriella Francesca for the inspiration. You rock girl. Thank you so much. This was again so cool. But yeah, I think that finally does it for me. So until next forum, take care. Peace out. Bye. And wear your fragrances.